things here in this video. This will just be a general video covering, you know, some of the basics of the business operations for AT&T Q3 2023, and it's a good one. Just looking at the most important things, things that Wall Street wanted to see, they saw. All right, I'll be sure to link the uh, the Barron's article for you guys here too, and of course you can follow along with any of these AT&T articles, including their investor relations page. Uh, but ways to support us to show your appreciation here for the channel. Appreciate the SMT making a video this early, jumping out of the shower before work to make it. Uh, you could support us. Ways to do that are in the description. All right, let's talk financials first. Strong third quarter results. $30.4 in total revenues. Cash from uh, operating activities, $10.3 billion. Free cash flow. This is the big one, folks. $5.2 billion. If you guys remember, this was the sticking point for AT&T Q1, and it's why the stock was devastated. Right, they came in light at $1 billion in cash flow. They remained projecting $16 billion for the rest of the year. In order to do that, after looking at the Q2 numbers of just over $4 billion, they basically had to hit $10 or $11 billion for Q3 and Q4 combined. At a $5.2 billion clip for Q3, it probably projects them to hit their mark. In fact, AT&T is going to increase and lift the free cash flow target for the rest of the year to $16.5 billion. That's huge. That is probably the number one reason why the stock is popping up over 2.5% at the time of this production. Operating income at $5.8 billion. Looking at some of the other uh, things that we, we care about here on the channel. Uh, 468,000 postpaid phone net ads. I think that's probably above expectation based on last quarter where they came in light around 300 and some odd thousand phone net ads. ARPU growth is strong low levels of churn. I, I'm looking for some of those numbers as I go through this release. Uh, they surpassed 8 million AT&T fiber subscribers. Internet Air is expected to be uh, serving 30 plus more uh, markets by the end of the year. So that should drive up some revenues as well. Uh, 296,000 AT&T fiber net ads. So it looks like wireless strength. It looks like fiber strength. Uh, mobility services are up in terms of revenues by 3.7%. Looking at some other things here, uh, the 5G network build, the 5G plus, the C-band, the DOD, has now surpassed 190 million people. Uh, AT&T was tracking to hit 200 million people by the end of the year. That should be an absolute cinch. In fact, they'll probably exceed 200 million by the end of the year, probably somewhere around 205 or 210 the rest of the way. Uh, in terms of AST and Space Mobile, Right, they, they definitely wanted to mention that for a strength of what they're doing with their net, uh, networking. Uh, they continue to show strong numbers here, folks. So you've got earnings, you've got financial strength, you've got free cash flow, uh, you've got growth in, in wireless, you've got growth in fiber. I think that's why you're looking at huge potential popping here with the stock today. I'm looking for some other details. It says here, there were 26,000 prepaid phone net ads. Again, being very strong and prepaid, this continues to be a strength for AT&T with Cricket. Postpaid churn improved uh, for year over year. Uh, they're at 0.79%. Uh, so that might be industry best. We'll see what T-Mobile and Verizon could do, but 0.79 is very good. Prepaid churn will probably end up being industry best as well at 2.78. That is even lower than last year this quarter postpaid arpu is up 55 dollars and 99 cents a modest gain there first net connections have now crossed 4.3 million all right that continues to be a strength for their business uh, also with respect to business wireline that appears to be a weakness those revenues are down year over year operating expenses i think those are improved on that side of the house so it doesn't all seem bad there, but it does seem like something they probably want to improve in the coming quarters. Revenues in consumer wireline, those are up by 4.6%. Broadband non-fiber revenues, uh, those are kind of a problem, right? So they're talking about DSL decommissioning. They continue to work through that. Uh, in terms of fiber net ads, we talked about those. They did have some DSL losses. Uh, AT&T Internet Air customers, uh, they've been adding those. I'm looking for some numbers there. I'm not really clear on that. So that might be something we'll have to talk about later. Uh, but uh, And Latin America looks to be you know, pretty muted. Not really something strong for them, but they continue to own it. Folks, 
AT&T had a big quarter and they're guiding up. I think that's probably the most important thing we need to pay attention to with respect to their financials. They hit their mark. They're lifting their free cash flow. That is exactly what the market wanted to see. And it's responding with a pop. All right. So what do you guys think of the quarter? I think it's more of the same. I think AT&T is chugging along. They've refocused their business. They've stepped away from media. They've spun off all of that. They're focused on reducing their debt load. They're focusing on financials. And I think the, based on the dividend being up like whatever it is, like six, seven, eight percent I think, I think their investors are probably pretty confident. They probably only have one concern. We'll hear more about this uh, when the CEO and the CFO speak today at 8.30 a.m. Uh, they'll be talking about the lead cable situation. That's really it. That's the only hiccup right now for AT&T. Otherwise, they are chugging along. Uh, they've got upside the rest of the year. Guys, they've got tens of thousands of people they're going to lay off in the coming months that will continue to raise the cash flow. I think them lifting the cash flow is a huge indication of strength of financials and more cost-cutting revenue uh, potential there as well. Uh, they talked about AI. All right, that's helping customer care. It's helping repair and um, scheduling and maintenance. Uh, that will continue to accelerate through the future. What do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.